Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel! I know that the conservation pack for Planet Zoo has just been released, but we still have some animals from the previous pack, from the wetlands pack, to be added to our Elm Hill City Zoo. And one of those animals is the wild water buffalo. So today we will add this lovely animal to the Elm Hill City Zoo. The announcement time for the new pack, the uh, conservation pack, was sort of unexpected to me and I think to a lot of you. It has been announced and will be released a bit earlier than everyone expected, uh, so uh, that's why I still didn't have a chance to add two of the animals from the wetlands pack that I have planned for the Elm Hill City Zoo, uh, because I simply thought that I had time, but actually I don't have so much time time so the plan is to add the wild water buffalo which we are adding today and the Nile Letchway before the new DLC will be released. I still have some time and I hope that I will be able to do so. I also wanted to add flamingos to this wetlands uh, section of our zoo. I am not sure if I will be able to do that but I will do my best and maybe, maybe I will have enough time to build for those guys as well. I am of course super excited about the new DLC, I think that it brings so many nice features to the game, I mean the backstage props, uh, the new foliage that we know of and really really cool species of animals so I cannot wait but we will talk more about that in the second. Because let's focus now on today's video. So, as you guys could see at the beginning of this video, I created like a small pond, small lake, uh, because as I told you guys like several videos ago, I wanted to have like a natural body of water in our zoo. Uh, we don't have too many of those scenery uh, stuff, like uh, little hills, like lakes, ponds and stuff, so I really wanted to add something like that. Uh, and I thought that, you know, using like a pond that already was in here before the zoo was established uh, for uh, and use it for animals in in their uh, habitats is really cool uh, in my local zoo actually there is a river like a uh, flowing through the zoo it's more like a creek or something and it flows through several of the um, of the habitats animals use it and it looks so so cool so this was my idea for today's habitat uh, two of the animals will use the natural body of water it is the buffalo and the Nile Letchway uh, I decided to add like a platform slash bridge for the guests so that they can go through it to look at the animals uh, we will focus on that platform at the end of the video we will add some details to it and stuff like that and right now we are focusing on an actual habitat so as you guys can see right now I am working on a fence, uh, this time I also created the fence myself. Uh, this is inspired by my recent visit to the Berlin Zoo uh, and uh, the fence that I saw in the, for example, uh, European bison habitat or also the water buffalo habitat. It is like a metal, very solid fence. Those animals are strong, they are really powerful, they are heavy they have a lot of strength so it's really important to have like a very solid fence I didn't want to use like an in-game concrete wall or something I wanted to have something metal something see-through uh, like the mesh barrier or this metal something barrier didn't feel too strong for me so I decided to build something my own and in the end I really like how this fence is looking. I also decided to make it green because uh, by the end of this video when there will be cinematic shots uh, you will see all the greenery all the foliage that I added around this habitat and this fence really blends well uh, with all the bushes all the plants so uh, you sort of like lose it uh, it isn't so in your face so visible so I really really like that. 
Those animals will actually have quite a big water area, but I really like it. I like that they have so much space uh, to swim because they like to do it. Uh, the whole habitat is also a big one. Uh, the space requirements this time are just, you know, perfect. It is all in green. The animals are happy, so I am very happy too. But of course, it wouldn't be my video if I didn't struggle a bit with the habitat, because this habitat was actually a lot of struggle for me. If you go through different uh, wild water buffalo or water buffalo, because those are different species, uh, habitats in zoos around the world, all of those are very very, very simple, very plain. There is basically nothing besides some dirt, sand, mud, and some dead trees. Uh, this is because those animals are bovids. They are cows, basically. Cows, as you guys probably know, eat a lot. They are huge animals, so they need to uh, eat a lot to satisfy their appetites. Uh, that's why probably all the habitats of uh, those animals are so plain and boring because uh, those animals would simply destroy all the foliage, all the trees inside. And of course, I didn't want to build an empty habitat. I still wanted to make it interesting. That's why I came up with those uh, metal, like very solid uh, plant guards, uh, like plant protections uh, to have like some foliage in here still that the animals won't be able to uh, destroy. Uh, this is also inspired by my visit to Berlin Zoo. It was on uh, one of the photos that I took in the zoo and uh, I really like the design of this solid like uh, circular like guard for the plants and I decided to include that in this habitat and in the end I really, really like it. I think it looks like a regular uh, generic realistic zoo bovid habitat. The whole habitat will be a bit muddy, there will be a lot of dirt. Of course, I wanted to add the mud bath for them. Uh, I decided to make like, a special place for it, like uh, surrounded by those small rocks, and I really like how it is looking by the end. Uh, I added a lot of trees here for them to have some shadow. Uh, of course, all the trees are placed inside of those guards for them not to destroy it because I read about the wild water buffaloes that they love to eat tree bark. So it is really important uh, that they don't have an access to a bark of those trees. I know that there has been some confusion. I also was confused at first when it comes to the wild water buffalo and the water buffalo. Those two are actually a different species of animals. The wild water buffalo, as the name says, is wild. Uh, it's it lives in dense forests, it lives in wetlands, it lives near swamps, uh, it has those really like, large white horns and uh, it's not domesticated. When it comes to uh, what water buffalo, it is uh, sometimes called domestic water buffalo, it is a domesticated version of it. Sometimes those domesticated animals escaped or are just living like semi-wild. Uh, so uh, people can meet them somewhere uh, in the forest and stuff like that. But actually, uh, what I told you guys in the, for I think, announcement of the video uh, is that I am very like uh, familiar to the wild water buffalo because I have it in my local zoo and they are in a lot of zoos. And I was totally wrong uh, before because the wild water buffalo is not too common in zoos actually. There are not many zoos around the world that house them. Many, many of the zoos actually house the domesticated version, which is the, wa uh, the uh, water buffalo, which has uh, different horns. It looks total, like maybe not totally different, but you can spot the difference right away. And in my local zoo in Gdańsk, there are uh, water buffalo, the domesticated version. Uh, so just to clarify that, 
that you can go to Google Images, Google Graphics and look for a uh, water buffalo, the white water buffalo, uh, and for sure you will see uh, that difference. Uh, actually, you can be a bit um, confused by that as well because if I noticed that if you will type in uh, the wild water buffalo uh, in Google Images, some of the photos of the wild water buffalo with, will actually be a domesticated water buffalo, uh, which but I hope that after my little lecture about them, you will be able to spot the difference. So as you guys can see, I started to add all of the foliage to this habitat. Uh, I actually uh, added some of the ivies, like climbing up the huge tree that I decided to add to this habitat. This is the first time that I am doing it and I don't know why, because I love it. It is so realistic. You see this ivy vines like climbing up those tree trunks and I really like it and I think that I'll be using it much more uh, in the future. I won't include adding uh, foliage to all of those, you know, like planters or those tree guards uh, because it is simply doing the same thing over and over again. I am using like similar plants. I also will use some of those dead trees to add some, you know, branches in here and stuff like that. After that, I will be adding a lot of small rocks to add some details and some small plants in between those small rocks to sort of blend them better together, to blend the small rocks with the tree guards and stuff like that. I also didn't include adding all of those small rocks in this speed build because I didn't want to make this video too long and this is basically doing this stuff over and over again till I was satisfied with the final product. In the end, I am quite happy with this habitat. Uh, I had some issues with it. Uh, mainly because I would love to go more crazy with details, more crazy with plants and stuff. Uh, but in the end, I had to keep it in mind that this is a water buffalo enclosure and that we cannot go too crazy. Those guys still need some space. Uh, they need their mud, they need their uh, dirt, uh, and they need uh, their plants securely uh, closed in those metal cages. By the way, I of course also added a lot of enrichment items to this habitat. Uh, on the later stage of the video, you will be uh, seeing me adding a lot of dead trees and logs and stuff like that. This is what I saw, for example, in Berlin in the water buffalo habitat or in the habitats on all, uh, all over internet, uh, was that they had a lot of those dead trees, that branches and stuff like that, and they actually uh, grazed on them I saw it in Berlin uh, so I decided it is probably like uh, important to give them that uh, so I added a lot of those a lot of logs a lot of uh, branches a lot of uh, dead trees I also uh, recreated uh, the enrichment item that I saw in Berlin uh, which is basically a dead tree uh, with one piece of tree like a branch like a fake branch uh, that was hanging uh, on the chain here I used the rope and those animals were actually licking it so maybe it was like covered in salt or I don't know uh Maybe there was something else on it, but uh, I really liked it and I wanted to build something custom for this habitat. Okay guys, so let's talk now a bit about the new DLC that is coming soon. It will be out on 21st of June. I will be actually away uh, for a couple of days uh, next week. I have my little like uh, vacation. And when I firstly saw uh, the trailer, all I had in back of my head while I was uh, watching it was that please uh, don't be released uh, next week. Please don't be released next week because I knew that I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to play it to cover it on YouTube. But uh, I will be back on 19th. I Thing and it will be out on 21st so perfect timing for me I will be here at home to enjoy it uh, first of all it was a huge surprise to me uh, if, if you guys saw my uh, like prediction video after the live stream that plans you do did this week I sort of uh, of course knew that there will be a leopard in this uh, DLC and I thought that 
um, by the flowers and the meadow and stuff. They want to sort of tease the grassland DLC, but it is actually a conservation pack, which is somehow like interesting for me because what I would think for a conservation pack is that it is a perfect pack to be an animal pack. Uh, you know, we have so many endangered animals that are very iconic, that are in zoos because zoos try to re reintroduce them, uh, try to, you know, make so many efforts to uh, to save those species. Uh, so eight animals would be easy to include in such a DLC. And when you think of conservation, you you don't actually think of building pieces, of scenery and stuff like that. So this is very interesting for me. I wonder why they uh, decided to make the uh, wetlands pack an animal pack, not a scenery pack, when it will be so, so easy to have like scenery pieces in the wetlands pack. I can see those, you know, houses that are on those stilts, I think that they are called, uh, and whole pack like based on it, but uh, actually we get the conservation pack, which is the scenery pack. Sorry for my dog, she got, I think, spooked by something, but I am uh, pretty sure that you could hear the bark in the distance. Yeah, this was my dog, sorry about that. So yeah, conservation pack with scenery pieces is uh, a bit surprising for me, but uh, what I saw in the first trailer is so, so, so exciting for me because we get so many backstage pieces, backstage stuff pieces, like, I don't know, shovels and stuff like that. And it makes me so, so, so happy because those were the things that I always told you guys that I would love to have in this game uh, because our backstage stuff are, were actually lacking those. I was using some blueprints from the workshop for those things. And finally, now we will be able to use them. I also really like the new uh, building set, I mean the new walls uh, that we'll, we saw on the pictures and in a trailer. So I think that we are up to something really, really cool and I really can't wait. And also there will be probably a lot of new foliage. I saw some new grasses, I saw some new flowers and other uh, things in the materials, the promotional materials. So. Yeah, this will be amazing, I already can tell you, and I really cannot wait for it. And when it comes to the animals, of course we have the Amur Leopard, the thing that we sort of predicted. Uh, it is just a perfect addition to my uh, wildcat house in the zoo, so we will add it for sure. I am very curious of how it will look, because the recent designs of the animals in Plant Zoo are just beautiful, so I think that we are up for a treat. Then we have the Przewalski horse, which was very high on my wish list when it comes to the animals. Uh, I love how it is looking. I love it on the photos. I love it in a trailer. And uh, yeah, I am really, really happy that it is added because I think that it is one of those really important animals when it comes to, you know, learning about conservation and stuff like that. I saw it many times in different zoos. I actually used to have it in my local zoo. Uh, uh, they are not there anymore, I don't know why, but I remember seeing them very, very often and they are really, really beautiful animals and I already have some ideas for their habitats. Then we have the Siamang, a gibbon that is finally added to the game. Everyone wanted it. Everyone wanted to see the branchiation in the game. And finally, we will have it right now. Uh, I think that there will be a special enrichment item. We saw this like uh, metal frame, like uh, structure frames for, for them. Uh, I am not sure if it will be like module pieces that you'll be able to put together to create those climbing frames or it will be a large, you know, like an enrichment item that they will be using with some animations. We will have to wait and see for that. But still, I am very happy that the gibbons are added and I cannot wait to see them using their habitats, using their, like simply to see their uh, animations because the monkeys are always 
always very, very exciting to have in this game. Then we have the Scimitar Horned Oryx, the animal that I am very excited for. I think that it is a perfect addition to this zoo game. Uh, animal that is very like uh, common in zoos, uh, that uh, breeds really well in zoos, that uh, I actually have in my local zoo, so I am very like familiar to this animal. Uh, it is a beautiful antelope. Uh, I know that some of you guys are probably not as excited for an antelope as you are for a leopard or uh, or even the Pshewalski horse but still really really cool addition by the way as I told you guys in my announcement video I have an advantage here because the Pshewalski horse I mean the Pshewalski is a Polish surname is a Polish last name so I am able to pronounce that without any problem and some of you uh, I know that may struggle with it I already like heard so many different uh, you know uh, versions of it i don't want to repeat that because i don't want to make fun of everyone but if you like to learn how it is pronounced it is a przewalski horse yeah in polish we have a lot of those czy, czy, zi, zi, and stuff like that and it is so hard to pronounce for the foreigners uh, but not for me so yeah once again przewalski horse and of course the exhibit animal is the axolotl, a very cute addition. I hope that it will have this smiley face as they sometimes do. And I am pretty happy with this exhibit animals and I cannot wait to see how it is actually looking. And what are your guys thoughts about the new DLC? Please share them with me in the comment section. Are you happy with the animals that were chosen? Uh, are you happy with the new uh, backstage stuff which I am so 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 beyond excited for? Uh, what are your thoughts? Please tell me and I will for sure reply to all of your comments. Okay, but let's finally talk about what I did in the video on your screens. So, as you guys can see right now, I am working for a shelter for uh, the wild water buffalo. This shelter is heavily inspired by my visit in uh, Berlin Zoo again. This shelter is based on the shelter for the water buffalo from this zoo. My version in Planet Zoo had to be a bit wider uh, just because of the traversable area of the animals. Uh, you know, you they need to have those big entrances, big openings to go in. Uh, that's why I had to do this building a bit like wide and big. But in the end, I quite like it. Uh, I remember how you guys liked and how I also liked the, the cladding, the facade of the building that we did for the uh, arctic fox and this is what i wanted to repeat and use here again because i really like diet that design uh, so at first i only used this on this uh top part of the building but then you will see me change that also uh on the entire building basically and i really really like that uh, this building has this like really cool detail of like those pillars in front like this whole front part of the roof is held on those pillars it looks really cool uh, I also wanted to build something like wooden really like city zoo like for those uh, buffaloes and I really like the shelter that I did here this shelter will also be for the Nile Letchway in the next episode they will have their entrance and on the other side you guys will be able to see it in the future video uh, i didn't show you uh, making an inside like a backstage stuff for them because it was really really easy i didn't like uh, thought it was too important to show here in the video uh, this is it is all just you know uh, plaster pieces metal pieces and all set up to <laughs> uh, create those stalls for them uh, again with really large openings for them to be able to go from one stall to another. 
What I also did was a holding pen uh, for the buffaloes. As you know, uh, I am always keeping attention to those parts. Uh, the animals sometimes need to be uh, separated in zoos. Uh, they are living all their lives in the same enclosure. There are sometimes, uh, like, you know, occasions uh, where they are sick, they are, I don't know, fighting and stuff like that. So uh, it's really, really important to have those places where they can be separated so I did that in here as well so I created sort, sort of like a gates uh, to this holding pen there's also some you know uh, locks and stuff there's one of those uh, foliage guards with some foliage inside and after being done with that I went on to do uh, the viewing platform for uh, the wild water buffalo uh, I decided to change uh, the floor of the platform from this different default flooring of the path to the uh, wooden platform from the aquatic wood. I really like those uh, wall pieces, like I love this set so I wanted to use it here. And then I did like a barrier for you guys. Uh, I, uh, as you guys can see, uh, firstly added another barrier that I did for the altars that I really loved and then started to create something similar to, uh, but I wanted to have like this point of reference like the heights and stuff like that because I knew that it has those like ideal dimensions uh, but this time I wanted to create something more metal uh, so I used a lot of those iron bars I used mesh pieces uh, and also some wood on top Okay guys, this is all that I have for you today in this video. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel. If you will subscribe, you will make sure you won't miss any of my future uploads. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up down below. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. And of course, comment down below if you enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!